Good morning. Good January morning. Um, I'm up at my allotment doing a bit of clearing. Um, and at the moment I'm in the fruit patch. So I've got my, my gooseberries and blueberries and things that are they're just starting to bud and come back to life again. But down here, I'm actually going to take some of this out. And I left a lot of it in this side last year because a lot of the weeds that grow on my allotment are edible and I can harvest bits and pieces of them as I go um, but there's quite a lot of things that aren't here now and, and just a bit of a mess so I'm going to clean the space up but before I do I wanted to show you some of the things that are edible so that you can recognize them because these are really really common things in the wild and the first one that I wanted to show you in this video is this lovely stuff which is called ground ivy and you can see the name comes from its its growth habit so it, it covers the ground and it looks a lot like uh, lots of little individual plants coming out of the ground but if you if you delve a little deeper and you just kind of nudge one of the well, this is a particularly deep one one of the stems you'll see that it actually is made up of these long runners that put down roots along their length so it's one one big plant that's growing here we are look growing many small plants that all have their own little roots but they're all connected together as one um, It's okay. I've got my helper at the allotment today. Um, and I think it's relatively easy to identify. That growth habit um, is quite distinctive. The shape of the leaves is also quite distinctive. The only thing I've seen people misidentify this as is, uh, and only online, never in person, is uh, hedge garlic or jack by the hedge or garlic mustard, all the same plant. Um, and this... I think it looks a bit different. Um, the basal leaves, the, the leaves that stay over from one year to the next with garlic mustard are rounder like this than, than its mature leaves further up the plant. Um, but they still have much pointier uh, kind of lobes on them. And you can see the lobes on this are very blunt, very kind of flat and then a dip and then flat and then a dip, as opposed to being kind of pointy, more serrated looking edges. Um, it has quite a similar pattern of veins. Um, this is hairy, minutely hairy. I'm pretty sure Jack by the Hedge is not. Um, I wonder if you can see that actually. It's going to annoy me that it's not focusing very well. There we go. Um, let's see if we can pick up those hairs for you because it really does help. There we go. So little hairs on the top surface. Um, often these will also, you can see they kind of come from a dip in the middle where the, the stem joins the leaf and then they're kind of curved and go back down again at the edge where garlic mustard doesn't do that. Um, and the stem, whilst it is joined in what looks like the middle, they're actually a kind of heart shape, but the tops of the heart overlap. Can you see that? So it's going backwards from the stem in this lovely heart shape, but you just can't see the heart shape often because they overlap. It's more obvious on young leaves where they aren't overlapping so much. You see that? So that's some visual differences. Um, Jack by the Hedge or Garlic Mustard also uh, grows as individual plants. It doesn't have these these. Uh, runners, these stems that run along the ground, putting down roots at different points. It just is individual plants. Um, and the smells, the smells are just incredibly different. So uh, garlic mustard is a mustard family plant, but it uh, also smells and tastes a little bit allium-y, um, hence its other name being garlic or hedge garlic or whatever. Um, this uh, ground ivy is an incredibly strong, pungent, difficult to describe herbal smell. It's really 
like very herby, very aromatic, quite, um, I would say almost medicinal or something. Like it's quite intense, but it's not medicinal in, in a way that a lot of other things are. Basically, you're going to have to sniff it. Um, and once you have, you'll never forget it. It's an incredible smell. I really, really love it. Um, and I use it as a pot herb in stews and soups and things like that, or in um, mixed herb kind of dressings and sauces. I often make things like uh, wild salsa verdes and chimichurris and things like that. Um, I actually don't like hedge garlic or garlic mustard uh, and don't eat it, <laughs> which is a funny thing for a forager to say. But I have very strong opinions on the things that I I teach. I just don't eat all of them. I do not think that's a good reason for you not to eat them. Um, you should try things that are edible if you want to and see what you make of them. Um, but that one is a lot more bitter, a lot more kind of garlicky and mustardy, uh, a little bit hot. Doesn't smell or taste anything like this one. Both of them are edible, so we're not in dangerous territory here. Um, but you just need to be sure that you've got got one or the other. So it is quite important to to know those um, those features. This also has um, lovely square stems. It's related to things like, um, oh, what do you call it? Dead nettles. It's just not playing focus at all today. Let's try a manual. There we go. So can you see that the stem is square? It has four edges, four flat sides. I've picked it off at a place where it's not even that obvious, but easier to see from the side there. Very clean corners. So that's another another differentiating feature. Um, but I think the growth habits and the smells are enough for even beginners um, to feel relatively confident about identifying these. Um, and the more you come into contact with them, the easier you will find Boy. it. Hello. I watered the plants. You watered the plants? Are you helping me today? Yeah. Yeah, you're such a great helper. Yeah. Thanks. Um, if you're enjoying the videos and uh, and you're finding them very useful and informative, um, I will pop my Buy Me A Coffee link underneath. Please do like and subscribe. Um, it's so, so useful when you're growing a, a YouTube channel to have people doing that. Um, and do follow us on Facebook uh, and Instagram and places like that, uh, Ashdown Forage on all of those. And we now have a website, ashdownforage.com, where you can find me and see what I'm up to. And I will be adding blogs and recipes and things as I go. Um, and all of our courses will be listed there. So our first foraging course of the year will be starting on uh, Sunday the 30th of January. So if you're local, it will be lovely to see you there. Um, and in the meantime, enjoy. I think people often think that January is a very quiet time for foraging. Actually, there is a bucket load going on. You can see all this new growth of lovely things. And that extends to quite a lot of, of lovely herbs and, and new greens and things. I'm going to go and help my assistant finish some of the weeding. Enjoy your forage.